Hello, everybody. Welcome to Season 3 of Grand Tactician. This time around, we will be playing another Union campaign. However, there are some buffs to the Confederacy. I believe I put the Confederacy on 10 or was it 15 or 20 bonus? I can't remember already. <laughs> uh, and I'm playing on Mediocre just to keep trying out the balancing and see how the new update patch is going to turn out. Here we can see off the bat, national morale is okay. I only have 825 troops so far against their 2700, so they have a slight advantage. In terms of policy, we can now see that I have chosen Underground Railroad, Breadbasket, and Industrialization, while the Confederacy has chosen Apostles of Disunion, which will give uh, support in the slave states by 20 but it will also increase my support by 10. They have filibustering, which will allow some recruitment from the Latin America uh, locations, and a military experience plus 5. And King Cotton, which also gives the slave states plus 5, and European support for them by 20. So we shall see how this turns out. In terms of other policies, as I mentioned in the update video, there's the Regulars Act, which is currently unavailable right now because I have to research the first military policy. But originally, it would took seven days to research, and now it takes well over a month to research. So that is also a plus. Right off the bat, I'm probably going to get diplomacy and military going, so that way I have troops by the time war starts, and I can get some Enfields and some Lorenz rifles uh, getting imported as well. In terms of military, I don't have a military yet. They have two, the Florida and the South Carolina militia, so that's why they have a little bit more. But in this beginning phase, I'm just going to try and research as many policies as I can. And I'll cut back to when a newspaper or war starts. Fort Sumter is slowly deteriorating. PGT Beauregard is taking command and is trying to take Fort Sumter, as we all historically know. Uh, that's about it. Uh, finances are climbing right now and Military One is being researched, so let's keep going. Davis has called for a militia, 12-month contracts, provisional army form, states recruiting new regiments, call to arms. So that's not good. Obviously, war is building up, so let's see what happens. Lincoln has been inaugurated, 16th president of the United States, and Buchanan has left, and the South is angry that Lincoln is president, as we all know. Continuing on, the Confederate States Army has been established March 7th. Uh, it's patterned after the U.S. Army. 100,000 men, he is calling. Let's see how that goes. Regular Army is 16,000 men planned. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's keep going. Ah, here's a new newspaper. A speech in delivered in Savannah. I'm going to assume that means is delivered in Savannah. Stevens addresses the nation. Cornerstone address. New government foundations laid. Further secessions predicted. Uh, on March 21st, the Confederate Vice President Alexander H. Stevens gave an oration in Savannah, Georgia, in which he stated the new government foundations are laid. Blah, blah, blah. The speech has been named the Cornerstone Speech. In it, Stevens also argued against central government spending on internal improvements and that due to the low... Uh, debts of the seceded states, they are sufficient to form a successful republic. He also predicted that surely North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arkansas would be members of the Confederacy in the near future, and that Virginia, Kentucky, and Missouri would also eventually join. And he would be right for the most part. Kentucky and Missouri would be kind of uh, in between, though. So that's a little interesting new newspaper. I believe they said that they came out with some new historical ones to pop up every now and again throughout the campaign. So we will keep an eye out for those. Here we see Confederate militias have been recruited in Cuba. Cuba, a supply base for the Confederacy. Number of Cuban volunteers remains low. Walkers, Nicaragua sending supplies. The Spanish calling for revenge. Dun dun dun. So that may actually lead to Mexico fighting with the Confederacy in this campaign. I guess we'll have to keep an eye on that. Very interesting. 
And here, our first military policy has been selected. The Union strengthens its military, more government funding. Navy proposes arming civilian ships, preparations for a blockade. So that will give us more recruitments and be prepared for whatever happens April 15th of this year. They have also made a change so that originally with the military two policy, you could go straight for colored troops, at least on the Confederate side. I'm not sure about the Union, but it seems that you can only get the colored troops now if you go for Emancipation Proclamation, which was historically accurate. So I'm glad they changed that. And the acts within the policies also take a month now rather than what was like 10 days or something like that. So this will definitely help out in the long run. They have definitely revamped everything, which I think is perfect, or at least almost perfect. I'm sure they can buff it out a little bit more. But now I'm going to research diplomacy, and I mean, the war will have started by the time it finishes. So let's find out what happens. And the Confederacy has chosen the first diplomacy as their first option. They're sending diplomats, and they're trying to get weapons imported. So that will give them a little bit more firepower. Not sure about numbers, though, but let's keep going. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Civil War has begun April 15th, 1861. We are now going to do our best to recruit troops and get ready for the first fight whenever that takes place. Let's see, I'm very curious about the recruitment balance because in the Confederate campaign that we just ended with, unfortunately, uh, rather too soon, I believe, but in the, that campaign, the AI had sent almost every single army from the West all the way to the capital in Washington. And that allowed them to just stack up upon troops upon troops and they basically just kept trying to take over the capital i'm curious now to see if they balance that out and if the armies will stay in their relatively respected spots even though um, uh, the confederacy is the ai now so we'll see if their army of tennessee and their missouri armies will try and to come over to richmond and try and take washington I hope that's not the case because I want it to be even across the board, you know, fight all across the states and stuff. That's the ideal outcome, I believe. But I am uncertain if they balanced it out yet. So let's find out. Apparently, I have invaded the South already. Oh, yeah, that's right, because uh, I have the army right here in Missouri with General Harney. Um, yeah. Sorry, that's one objective down already without me having to try. <laughs> they have also revamped the size of the armies at the start. There used to be quite a lot more. Um, yeah, they've definitely changed the order of battle in terms of the makeup of the army. Uh, right now, McDonald's is 7,000. But you can see here now with the recruit option, if I click on a division or a core, whatever it is. I can choose four infantry, however many cavalry, how many can I go up to? Uh, nine. Um, and you can choose however many you want. You can choose the lowest number. Uh, I believe it's like 1500 and then the middle number and then 3000 all the way up to the top. Uh, and then you just click the auto generate and they will start recruiting troops. And once that's done, you can click upgrade and now automatically upgrade all the weapons in the division, in the army, et cetera, et cetera. So it helps to make it much faster. I know it's also fun to kind of just go through and individually select a stage, have a personal attachment to the brigades and stuff. But when you're trying to compete to uh, the over stimulating amount of ai troops that sometimes the game likes to push out you gotta keep up so this will definitely help in the long run so let me start recruiting troops and i'll cut back to when the next interesting thing occurs so right now it's even both sides have about eighteen thousand troops confederate slight advantage because they have 20 european relation their experience is a little bit higher and 
their support, well, actually the support's relatively even. 94, 92, 93, 94, 95, 95. See, that's even. Um, so far, yeah, it's it's neck and neck. I'm I'm going to give it a little bit. Everything seems to be okay. Uh, my weapons aren't that great. A few have rifle muskets, but the majority just have regular Springfield muskets. So once we get the Enfields imported and stuff going, that will definitely help. And then eventually I'll get the regulars. So that way I'll have a division of completely trained U.S. regulars that will help out as well. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited about this campaign. A lot of major improvements to the game so far. So kudos to the devs. Your tenacity to keep developing and fixing is really appreciated. And I also want to give a quick shout out to everyone that has subscribed in the past few days. I wasn't expecting to climb all immediately almost to 50 subscribers i know that's relatively low but to me starting out you know that's impressive uh, and i'm very grateful that you all have subscribed and enjoy what i do so far i know it's not a lot it's just basically grand tactician and uh like one like scourge of war you know when i get to it but for those who enjoy grand tactician and what i do thank you and i hope to finally reach 50 and continue on to at you know a hundred and so so again thank you and let's just keep going here's a new newspaper religious unrest in the u.s continues factory workers feuding animosity between nationalities immigrants volunteering to take arms catholics willing to serve United States, a nation founded by immigrants, has seen the number of new immigrants surging since the 1840s, known as the land of opportunities. Since the Industrial Revolution in U U.S., the nation has been seen as an attractive target for emigration. With especially the revolutions in the German states in 48 and 49 and the Great Famine in Ireland in 45 to 52, hundreds of thousands of new immigrants have moved to America from Europe. This has created unrest as the poor immigrants are in many cases willing to work in factories for lower pay than the Americans. Also, many of the immigrants are of Catholic faith, especially those from Ireland. In the 1850s, a na nativist movement called the Know Nothing Party grew popular in its protests against Catholicism in the U.S. Even violent confrontations occurred all the animosity has eroded northern unity but now with the flames of a civil war sweeping the nation many immigrants flock to serve their new country maybe their patriotism will win them a place in the home of the brave let's find out so far the recruitment rate is really even 32,000 on both sides no one is beating the other very interesting. Usually, there's there was a much starker contrast in the previous patches. Um, so far, my trade warfare, I've been spending quite a bit. Uh, weapons industry is also relatively even. Um, and of course, Navy always outnumbers the Confederacy. But yeah, it's it's really just tr pumping it out, like just trying to get as many troops going as possible. I think they are moving a few troops, a few armies, but I'm not sure where because my intelligence is low. It's saying the Army of Northwest is just kind of glitching out in the side of Maryland, but it's not doesn't say they're invading, so I guess I'll keep an eye on that. Um, and the recruitment system is actually really beneficial. Yeah, I just you gotta keep an eye out though, because sometimes they will choose states where the support is super low like tennessee for some reason but i think if you uncheck neutral states they will, it will only uh recruit from your supported states so make sure you uncheck neutral states or else it will do tennessee and maryland and stuff so keep an eye on that still got about forty-five thousand troops to recruit depending on the size and stuff I know one thing that they're going to go for is once the brigade is recruited, you'll be able to change the uniform. As of right now, you can't, but people want to change the color of the uniforms and stuff after they recruit the brigade. So that's something they're also working on in their list. So just let's keep going. So far, nothing interesting. Just trying to rack up troops. 
I don't want to be too aggressive yet. I want to see what happens, but eventually I'll probably send Harney against the Missouri State Guard and have a little fight there. Ah, and the Confederacy has just unlocked their military policy, so they will have more recruits, and my diplomacy is just about to come in, so we're, we're about neck and neck. Um, one glitch, though, I think they are aware of it, though, is that uh, some policies keep getting are, are always just selected randomly um so you have to keep especially into industrialization i think that's a bug well it is a bug i don't know can't speak today blah 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 so yeah make sure you keep an eye as of right now keep an eye on your policies because some may be randomly selected and you don't want to do that because then it'll bump the amount of days through the roof so always just one diplomacy at a time, or not diplomacy, policy, one policy at a time. Okay, now we're starting to see a little bit of a difference in troops. I got 41,000 going, they have 33,000. So let's see if we can be a little bit more accurate and try and get to the 75,000 mark that Lincoln originally called for. Uh, diplomacy has just been finished. I am now going to start researching the regulars. Might as well get them in. Uh, I'm a little nervous that the AI is just going to gun-ho right to Military 2, but that'll take them about 48 days, hopefully not. Because uh, I definitely want to get Industrialization and these other ones researched as well, but it's going to take a while. Um, if the AI is smart, they'll do the same and not just focus strictly on their military policy. But they may, so let's just keep an eye on that. So I'm just going to do it right off the bat. Just going to launch them against the Missouri State Guard, may as well. Just to see what will happen. They may withdraw. Who knows? Because so far, nothing else is happening. So far, the Army of Tennessee is somewhere in there. The Army of the Northwest is somewhere around here. Arnie's already at destination. And McClellan's trying to get his troops recruited. Are they not within the circle? Nope. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, a little, little bit more. Let's see. Almost there. Come on, boys. There we go. So we have 8,000 versus 3,000. This will be quick work. I'm just not even going to show the battle just because that's it's not even a battle. <laughs> it's just a small skirmish. So let me cut back to when this fight is over. All right, we are back at the results screen. A glorious victory at Franklin, Missouri. Major victory for us. They had total casualties of 837. There of 105 killed, and their morale is nervous. We lost 914 with 172 killed, 116 missing, and the rest wounded. Morale is fine. The supply mediocre. We captured 319 rifles and three guns from the field. Uh, unfortunately, Colonel Potter, his brigade, he has lost face, so I'll probably have to replace him. About 1,800 casualties. Let's see, any commanders killed? No. All right, so that is that. And that will lead to our first major Union victory. We shall press on. Hopefully, we'll get three consecutive major victories. Let's find out. European support wavers. Confederacy suffers a major defeat. Diplomats report little enthusiasm. Foreign intervention averted? I hope so. Let's wait until that is over. It should be now. Um... Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> we complete... <laughs> We disintegrated the Missouri State Guard. That is amazing. With every man for himself. Ceased to exist as an effective fighting force. That's because they were so far into my territory with the towns and stuff. There's no near destination for them to retreat to. All the towns surrounding them were Union. So they fled or disintegrated. I mean, wow. I was wondering where they went. <laughs> What a great way to start this campaign. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next battlefield. Bye-bye.